there were 43 chemicals that were measured in 99 to 100% of the women. So the kind of chemicals we found were things that had been banned, so like chemicals from DDT, which was a pesticide that was used in the 70s. We find some PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, which were also used in the 70s and banned in 1976, but we find a lot of contemporary use chemicals in these women as well. So for example, we find a lot of perfluorinated chemicals. These are chemicals that are used for in your cookware or for non-stick type fabric. We find um, also phthalates, which are used in personal care products as well as plastics. The thing about this study is first that it represents what sort of the average woman, pregnant woman in the United States is exposed to. It also is the first time that someone has taken each of the chemicals. So some studies look at some chemicals in this population or a few of these other like phthalates in a different population. But what if we actually looked at all of them together to count sort of what's the total body burden? And that's uh, what one of the unique contributions of the study is. What do we do about it? So some things that people can do personally that help reduce exposures or help mitigate the effects of exposures to environmental chemicals are very common sense. So eating a healthy and well-balanced diet can help reduce the effects of some environmental chemicals. Keeping um, some of the chemicals will migrate through um, dust in your house, so keeping your house clean and washing your hands can also reduce exposures to environmental chemicals. And then sometimes people can do things within the choices they make in terms of their personal uh, products that they buy or bring into their house. The other simple thing you can do at home besides the cleaning is, for example, you can not microwave in plastic. So a lot of chemicals there are that are in some of these plastics can migrate out more if put things in plastic in the microwave, so if you put things in ceramic dishes, that can also reduce your exposure to some of these chemicals. While there are things that you can personally do to reduce your exposure to environmental chemicals, and there are studies that show that they do work, that sometimes that there are not every exposure can be avoided through personal choice, and that's why it's very important that we have society-wide interventions as well. So for example, um, we used to have lead and gasoline. And if you did not want your child to be exposed to lead, you could do nothing about it because lead was in gasoline. Only after the government took lead out of gasoline did we see reductions in lead in the air, reductions in lead in children, and then we have all these benefits because lead is known to developmental neurotoxicants. So what this study says is, yes, you, there are issues that we have about pregnant women's exposures to chemicals, people can make choices about that, but that we also need to use this to fold into government policies to address these exposures to chemicals to a vulnerable population.